So now, friends, let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And there is another element about keeping the Sabbath that most of us might be missing. And don't worry, while I am out, you will have good preachers here. So don't think about missing church. Amen. The blessing is not in the person, it's in the message that God gives. And God inspires both, all, the, all those that will be speaking. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. So therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. Now keep in mind them. We're going to see who is the them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it in those who heard it hearing the word of God without combining it with faith is useless I would even go so far to say as practicing the word of God without combining it with faith is useless you are wasting your time the Pharisees practice their faith the Pharisees practice the word of God but they had no faith. They did not believe in the promises of God, in the Messiah, that they so often read about in the Old Testament. And so here, in Hebrews chapter 4, there still remains a rest. And verse 2 said that there, there is a group of people that did not enter that rest. And the gospel was preached to them as it was to us, but they did not profit because they didn't mix the word, the promises, with faith. With faith. The rest of the Sabbath has been around for a very, very long time. The rest of the Sabbath. God is actually restless that we haven't gotten into His rest. You see, there's more than, than not going to work in keeping the Sabbath. There's more in coming for just two hours to church in keeping the Sabbath. The, keeping the Sabbath that they holy has a lot more to do than waking up early, waking up early, <laughs> and coming to Sabbath school, and then coming to church service, and then leaving. There's much more than that in keeping the Sabbath. Hebrews there, chapter 4, verse 4. Notice verse 4. For he has spoken in a certain place of the Sabbath day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his work. So what rest is he talking about? The Sabbath day. It's there in verse 4. Talking that God rested on the Sabbath day. And that takes us back to Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 through 3. Where God created in the last day, the Sabbath day rest. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. There he made the day and made a blessing on it. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all of his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it he rested from his work which God had created and made. See, the rest of that day is blessing and sanctification. And sanctification. The blessing and the sanctification is in the day. It's in the seventh day. You can choose to rest any other day you want, but God says, I want you to rest on the seventh day. The seventh day. And again, I wouldn't make such an issue if God would have made such an issue when he says in the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day. Day. It's not the idea, it's the day. The blessing is in the day. 
Don't ask me how it works. All I know is that the blessing is in the day. Right now, this day. But you may think, well, what about the other part of the world? Do they miss out the blessing because, no. They get the blessing too, in their day. In their seventh day. Just how we get the blessing in the seventh day here. The blessing is in the day. And we don't do anything to make Sabbath holy. It's already holy. It's already holy. God made it. And the day actually hasn't changed. Because there in Hebrews 4, verse 8 and 9, it says, For if Joshua, who, who, who continued as their leader after Moses? Joshua. Okay. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. Therefore, I'm sorry, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. If another day had been given, wouldn't Joshua here, the book of Hebrews is saying, wouldn't Joshua have mentioned it to them? Because when they got the rest or, re or, or were reminded of the rest, it was Moses that was reminding them. And here it says, if there was another day, wouldn't Joshua have told them? But there remains a rest. And there in verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 4, we see that some are refusing to enter that rest. Verse, verse 5 and 6. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains that same that some must enter it. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Because of disobedience. Look at, look at verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not, did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So who is, who is this group of people that did not enter into that rest? That, that the same gospel that was preached to us was preached to them. They did not enter it. In, in, in verse 6 it says they did not enter it because of disobedience. If we look at the chapter before, Hebrews chapter 3, it tells us a clear indication. Verse 12, which is right there, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, beware brethren. Okay, God is, is, God is, is warning us. Be, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So be careful. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it is said today, if you hear the voice, his voice, do not harden your heart as in rebellion. Verse 16, for who, having heard, rebelled? And here's the answer. Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? So who are the they in chapter 4 that are not entering his rest? Who? Those that came out of Egypt. Who came out of Egypt? Israel. God's people came out of Egypt. Verse 17. Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Notice that. And the he is capitalized. God, God took him out of Egypt. And we know that they wandered for 40 years. And during that wandering, God is upset. Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? That generation died in the wilderness and did not enter the promised land. Except for two, Joshua and Caleb. In verse 18, And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter it because of unbelief. 
And then verse, chapter 4, verse 1 begins, Therefore, because of that, there still remains a rest. There still remains a rest. Even if Israel didn't keep the rest, and they would preach the gospel just like we were, Paul tells us, but there still remains a rest. There still remains a rest. Exodus 16, if you, if you turn with me there to Exodus 16, and this is just a review because we've seen these verses before. But here, the God rained manna down from them in Exodus 16, verse 22 and 23. It says, And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two alms for each one, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath what? Rest. A holy Sabbath. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil tomorrow. But tomorrow, don't do that. So tomorrow is a Sabbath rest. Don't miss that. It's a rest here. It mentions. In verse 25, it talks about the Sabbath and manna. That there won't be any manna on Sabbath. So don't go out looking for it. And in verse 27... You still got some people that go out looking for it. But I'm so glad. Notice verse 27. Now it happened that some of the people, I'm so glad it, it didn't say all the people. That just some. Friends, there are still some that do rest on the Sabbath day. Amen. But it happened though that some went out on the seventh day to gather it. Verse 28 says, And the Lord God said to them, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? How long will you refuse to enter into my rest? Into my rest. To my rest. You see, some of you or some of us may come here. We may not work. We had the day off. But work is in your mind. Stress is in your mind. Your weekly projects are on your mind. And you may be getting texts about weekly things. Did you forget to pick this up? Did you forget to drop this off? Did you forget to do this email? Or you may, or, or you may make yourself a reminder. Oh, remind after sunset to write that email and to go shopping and to do this and this. We may come here, but our mind is out there. Didn't Jesus say, if you lust at a woman with your eyes, you what? You commit adultery. If you hate your brother, you murdered him. Cannot it be applied to the Sabbath? Why not? If you're working in your mind, you may come here and sit down and pretend to sing, but you're working in your mind, your mind is going through things, you've broken the Sabbath. The Sabbath rest is more than just coming in and sitting for two hours or taking the day off. It is a real rest of everything, friends. Everything. Asking God to take our stress. Asking God to take away anything that might be bogging us down. You, you see, the devil knows that the rest has been offered to you. And he wants you not to enter it. He wants you, he'll be happy if you come to church, but your mind is still filled with stress and work. And you don't really get that full rest. The rest is, is more than just a physical nap. We need to take a rest from everything else. The rest is more than just coming to church, but it is a connection with God. A connection with God. And you know, when the times do get harder, and that time is very coming very soon, if you've been watching the news, you know how evil and sinful this world is getting. I'll just say that. And when Jesus comes, right before He comes, we're going to fully depend on Him. When He says, your bread and your water will be sure, what do you think he means? Your bread 
and your water are going to be sure. Don't stress about packing a backpack with water, canteen, bread, canned goods that will last. God says your bread and your water will be sure. We need to practice now on the Sabbath resting because when it's time to flee and time to really depend on God there, you're going to have to depend on Him every day. And the devil wants, you know, he, he wants us to miss out on the rest. They're going back to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And here the author reminds us that the, the rest still remains. It hasn't been done away with. Verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 4. You see, when you rest, you are joining God in the rest. Notice verse 10. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his work as God did from his. You are entering into rest with Jesus. You are entering into, into a more deeper relationship with him. And verse 11 gives us or an implication that we need to put effort really into this rest. Verse 11 says, Let us therefore be diligent. Does somebody else have a different version? L labor. Or give effort. I think the NIV says, You need to put effort to enter that rest. Least any one fall after the same example of disobedience. Who is the same example of disobedience? The Israelites, we just, read, we just read about them. We need to put effort into it. And friends, keeping the Sabbath, you do got to put effort. <laughs> you do have to put effort. It's so easy, you know, to, 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 after you go home, it is so easy because I have caught myself sometimes and we catch ourselves planning for the week already. Or maybe making a phone call and leaving a message, looking through the agenda, looking through the budget. It's so easy to, to lose track or forget about the rest, about the rest of the Sabbath. And we need to put an effort, make an effort. Sometimes someone may come at your doors selling something. It's happened to our, in our place. You know, that's the time to say, I'm sorry. I am resting right now and so is my checkbook. <laughs> come tomorrow, come tomorrow and you can, you can share what you have to share. But we, we, but we need to make an effort, be diligent in coming into that rest. And no one can give you the rest that only God can. Nobody. And we, so we need to stop trying to find rest or fulfillment through our jobs, through our friends, through our relationships, through hobbies. Friends, the only rest that is, will satisfy you is the rest of Jesus himself. You see, what you see here on this table, we're going to practice, we're going to partake of this Lord's Supper. What you see here on the table, Christ is offering you that rest. That rest. Resting on his sacrifice, resting on his forgiveness, on his salvation, on his salvation. So friends, will you take that rest? Will you accept it? I hope so, friends. I hope so. Verse 11, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest any of you fall after the same example of disobedience, friends. And we know what happens to those Israels they are making to the promised land. Friends, if we don't fully trust God and rest in Him, we will not enter into the promised land. We won't. So when you practice now, Entering into that rest. And I want to share with you that nothing soothes the soul like Jesus. Not even your mother or your father.
can soothe your soul like Jesus. Pray with me, Father in heaven. Lord, there still remains a rest. We know. But Lord, we come short sometimes in getting into that rest. And forgive us, Father, whenever we come short. And help us to fully trust you. We don't want to follow the example of the early Israel. But we want to follow the example of your son who rested and gave us an example of what it is to rest and when he depended solely on you for everything. And on this Sabbath day, friend, on, on this Sabbath day, Lord, we want to rest. Rest on your son, Jesus Christ. And accept that rest and his sacrifice that he has done for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.